in the days leading up to Christmas, we had the, was it called the bomb cyclone? Was that what it was called? Some kind of just terrible cataclysmic, I can't say words like that, uh, winter storm that moved steadily across the country, disrupting people's travel. In the days leading up to Christmas, there were massive flight cancellations, all kinds of transportation snarled, people stranded in cars, the horrific effects in upstate New York with dozens of people who died, who froze to death on the roads, literally. I mean, it was a tragic, tragic event with loss of life. Uh, for many of us, it was not loss of life it was loss of time with family or friends or vacations that we had long planned whatever it was and things got better as we got steadily closer to christmas as the storm moved uh, through the eastern part of the united states having traveled all the way across the country and things returned to pretty much normal for every airline but southwest and Southwest had an unbelievable meltdown, uh, the worst I can remember any airline having, and canceled uh, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of flights day after day after day, leaving people stranded. And uh, my wife and I happened to be two of those people. We were in New York City, and we were traveling to Atlanta to be with my wife's family for uh, the Christmas season. So the 22nd of December, our flight was canceled before we went to the airport. And so we just were scrambled and were able to find a flight the next evening. And so booked that. I thought, oh, well, so we'll still be there on the 23rd. Uh, go to the airport, go through security, all that, go to the gate. And we're at the gate time to board, flight cancels. And the, uh, the Southwest computer system autoed us to a flight on the 26th of December. So my wife would have missed all the stuff with family. So uh, I went looking around and I found a flight out of Washington National Airport, Reagan Airport. And so... I booked Amtrak tickets to go from New York to Washington on Christmas Eve, and Amtrak was great. I mean, it was, it was expensive. I mean, gosh, the Amtrak tickets were expensive last second. It was almost $400 for the two of us in coach on Amtrak, uh, but the trip was comfortable, it was easy, and we got to uh, Washington's Union Station early and by the way if you follow me on instagram you got to follow the instagram story of our misadventures with travel as we uh, navigated the cancellations and all the rest and so then we took a lift from union station to reagan airport go through security but before we went through security i got a hint of what was to come because at the Southwest ticket counter, so many flights had been canceled that it was, I think it was four degrees outside. It's very cold. The line wound through the terminal and outside. And people were down this long sidewalk out in this nearly zero degree weather. I'm sure with the chill factor is way below that. And so the full meltdown was already underway at Southwest Christmas Eve. So we get to the gate area, we wait. Uh, in Southwest, if you're not familiar, you have a boarding pass priority number, A group, then the B group, then the C group. So we're lined up. We had A group numbers. We're lined up in the A group. The pre-boards are getting ready to board. And then on my phone pops up an alert that my flight's canceled. And I go over to get out of line, go over to the gate agent. I said, is it true that the flight's canceled? She said, oh, no, we're about to board. And I said, well, I just got this alert, and this person behind me did, too, that the flight was canceled. So she picks up a phone, calls, I don't know who she calls, and then picks up the mic and says that the flight's canceled. So then we're just 
flat out of luck. We don't even get an, uh, an auto book to another flight. There's nothing we're going to get. So I go to rent a car, and I feel like, oh, I'm so lucky I found a rental car that I could rent at Reagan and drive to Atlanta. So we go down to the car rental place and get in line, come up the counter, and the guy says, oh, we're not honoring your reservation. I said, what? Yeah, we're out of cars. We're not honoring your reservation. These are the only people who were waiting around for cars. I said, can I wait like they are? He said, no, we're not honoring anybody's reservations. So <laughs> I was sitting there like, what are we going to do next? And uh, my wife, Lane, said, well, you know, you always talk about checking flights from all three airports. What about a car somewhere else? So I found a car at uh, Dulles Airport, uh, at Dulles Airport, so we took an Uber to Dulles. That was more than the airplane ticket, I think, would have been. And then we picked up our rental car, which was an incredible bargain. It was from Avis. We paid $148.99, including all junk fees, to be able to pick up a car at Washington Dulles and drop at Atlanta's airport. And uh, that was really, really cheap. And so we drove Christmas Eve night to Durham, North Carolina, stayed at a wonderful hotel I got on Priceline. I got a um, Hilton Garden Inn that was beautiful, right by Duke Medical Center, 99 bucks Priceline. And then we got there at one in the morning, Christmas, what was now Christmas Day morning. I uh, got about five hours sleep, got up, drove to Atlanta, and my wife was with her family at three that afternoon. So for us, it was inconvenient and we were delayed uh, three days, but it was not a disaster like so many people experienced. And there are so many stories about people matching up with people they didn't know and renting cars or vans or whatever and driving. There were people who rented U-Hauls when they couldn't find car rentals, and they drove U-Hauls one way to get to where they were going. And this has been such a deserved reputational harm for Southwest because they didn't have their act together technologically. They don't have a people problem. They had a technology problem. And their reputation will heal, but there are a lot of people whose plans were crushed, and they will never get that trip back. They will never get that time with family. And it's brutal because you pay that money expecting something in return. A couple of things out of this. One, we used to have a federal law that when an airline canceled a flight, they had to buy you a ticket on another airline. And no such requirement exists today. You know, the airlines impose so many stack deck rules on us, and it seems perfectly reasonable out of this and prior other airline meltdowns over the last two years that airlines should be required when they can operate a flight to buy you transportation on someone else. That, to me, is a very simple change that just requires the political will to overcome the lobbying power of the nation's airlines. A lot of people... We're stuck, stranded, and because it's the holidays, they may not have been able to find a flight on someone else, but even if they could, they probably couldn't have afforded it. So that's number one. Number two, when you're in a situation that is messy, you've got to be creative. And one thing you don't do is stand in one of those long lines. See what you can do on your phone. If you don't have the app for an airline, download the app. See what other arrangements you can make. Some airlines and some airports have terminals you can go when your flight's canceled, and it's like putting you to the front of the line rebooking. If you have ultra-high status with an airline, you have a number that will get you to the front of the phone queue, and it's worth trying calling that number. But if you're a member of the general public calling the regular reservation number, you're going to be on that phone hours if your call's ever answered. So you want to do things that are active, not passive, to try to solve the problem. 
And when you do talk with someone in an airline, never, never, never throw attitude at them. They're miserable too. They didn't cause the problem, their employer did. And you get so much more with honey than with vinegar. So remember, kindness pays, even in a situation when you're out of patience. And if you saw all those pictures of all those bags strewn everywhere around the United States, it's one of those things, my season always comes in. I'm out of season most of the time, but eventually my season comes around again, which is that you never, 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 not ever check a bag. If you can't take your trip with what fits in one carry-on bag, you're taking too much stuff. Um, as for compensation, Southwest is reimbursing you for all the other costs you had. They define them as reasonable with no definition. File a claim with Southwest at southwest.com if you're one of the affected passengers. Um, our claim turned out to be $980 approximately for a car rental, extra hotel, train ride, uh, all the other expenses we had with getting ultimately from New York to Atlanta on subways, buses, trains, no planes <laughs> ever. And so you, you file for those expenses. And then, of course, Southwest is giving the uh, frequent flyer miles per flight canceled. So I got it times three. I got what works out to $900 in travel in free vouchers. And so uh, that is money that I will be able to put to use. But this was bad, ugly. And it is inexcusable, and there should be consequences for an airline that doesn't have its act together. But the most important thing to me is what's referred to in the old rule book as Rule 240, that when one airline melts down, that the logical consequences, they've got to buy you a ticket on someone else right then and there to get you to your destination as quickly as possible compared to when you were originally supposed to get somewhere.